Up next. Voting is their number one right. Great Falls High teaching students the importance of voting. And a booming Halloween season for local businesses. Those stories and more right now on Fox 5. Your first local news at 9 starts right now. Only on Fox 5 at 9. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Emily Scarlett. Many still feeling the effects of a destructive fire that burned through several local businesses early yesterday morning. Even today, firefighters were still on the scene with many business owners keeping in close contact with insurance providers. Fire investigators began their long examination process this morning. Fire officials say the process can go on for weeks or even months to clean and assess all the damage. The fire was controlled between 2 and 3 in the afternoon yesterday. Still, hot spots continue to smolder at this time, which will keep crews at the sites. There is no chance for those hot spots to rekindle in the next few days, especially with expected windy conditions. We're in there. Uh, seeing if we can retrieve valuables for the business or property owner. So that may be uh, different types of files of client lists, databases, try to recover like CPUs that maybe their uh, in inventory is on, things of that nature. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep going. I mean, we've got a lot of work as it is right now. And we're going to try, we'll probably get slowed down a little bit, set back a little bit, you know, with lack of tools and stuff like that that burn up in the fire. But we're going to keep pressing on and deal with the jobs we've got going on right now and try to keep everyone as happy as we can in a timely manner. So. Businesses continue to work with insurance companies. The fire department says they will protect any items that are not completely damaged for the time being, and this should help local businesses maintain inventory and product records. Many local companies were unavailable or declined to comment. Yesterday, a Helena judge heard arguments regarding Republican gubernatorial candidate Rick Hill's campaign spending the temporary order blocking Hill from spending a contested $500,000 contribution remains in effect while a state judge considers whether the gubernatorial candidate can use the money for his campaign. District Judge Kathy Seeley of Helena has not yet issued an order in the case. Hill's campaign manager says the campaign is still complying with Seeley's temporary restraining order issued Thursday. Democratic candidate Steve Bullock has asked Seeley for an injunction that would prevent Hill from spending the money through the election. Hill argues he received a legal contribution from the Montana Republican Party after a federal judge ruled the state's campaign contribution limits unconstitutional on October 3rd. An appeals court reinstated the limits, which totaled $22,600 from all political parties for gubernatorial candidates. And the first public poll since Congressman Hill took that contested $500,000 donation released today, and it has Bullock leading Hill 47 to 44. Farrell's research group did a live call poll of 799 likely voters in Montana from October 26th through October 28th. Bullock prevails in the survey despite a strong Republican sample. Now moving into weather, Chief Meteorologist Adam Coslin is here with a first look at our forecast. Well, good evening. With everyone getting ready for Halloween, the big question is, will there be any showers impacting trick-or-treat? And the good news is it looks like most of these will be moving through overnight near the Canadian border and uh, near northern areas. So uh, ahead in your pinpoint forecast, we'll have a closer look at not only Halloween, but specifically trick or treat. Coming up in your uh, pinpoint forecast, a closer look at all of this and when those showers could return, maybe by the weekend, we'll look at some eventual changes. Emily, we'll have more. Back to you. CNN reporting a national death toll of 48 people. The nation getting a first look today at the scope of the damage caused by Sandy. Some losing everything as the storm battered the northeast, northeast with high surf, heavy rain and powerful winds. President Obama warns that Sandy is still pounding portions of the country. It is still moving north. There are still communities that could be affected. Uh, and so I want to emphasize there's still risks of flooding. There are still risks of downed power lines risks of high winds. Millions are without power in 17 states with no concrete timetable as to when the lights will come back on. During Hurricane Irene, um, restoration took eight days for full restoration. For Hurricane Sandy, the full restoration may in fact take longer. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie took a four and a half hour long helicopter tour of devastated areas in his state, comforting those who've lost everything. New Jersey is not the only state recovering today. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is also touring damage in Manhattan, where underground tunnels and subway stations are full of corrosive seawater. Even still, officials are saying the worst is behind them.
Montana is one of the few states with a budget surplus this year. And tonight in our special series, Your Election Headquarters, Fox 5's Kara Kirtley talks to the gubernatorial candidates about their budget management skills. Emily, I ask each candidate for governor how they plan to manage the budget if elected. We start with Congressman Rick Hill. Republicans controlled the legislature in the last uh, legislative session. I think they will control it again. I have a great working relationship with them. I'm confident that we will keep the budget in line. To the extent that we have a budget surplus that's a structural surplus, I think that a significant part, if not all of that, should go back to the taxpayers and lower property taxes. Uh, there's also funds there to create some cushion for us to be able to deal with uh, you know, the uncertainty of the fiscal world in, ahead and, uh, and have a sound uh, management of the state's finances. Next up is Attorney General Bullock. Here's his take on managing the state's budget. Right now I manage about a $75 million budget. Last year we actually turned about 6% of it back afterwards. Because, so I'll make sure that my government, the government that I run, is challenging every expense, is being efficient, and we're not going to overspend. But by the same token, um, I'm going to keep some of that grain in the bin. We'll keep surpluses. We'll invest in education in other areas where we can. And at times like this, you know, we'll give a little bit of money back to Montanans. In the Fox 5 studio, I'm Kara Kirtley. Two of the hot-button issues in Montana's Senate campaign include the feature of Medicare and Social Security. Senator John Tester joined forces with the state's Republican lieutenant governor to criticize Congressman Denny Reberg for supporting what they call irresponsible changes to the programs. Tester says Social Security is an important safety program for seniors, and instead of weakening it, the program should be made stronger. He says Reberg proposed cutting $764 million from Social Security. These cuts would mean delayed benefits for seniors and five to six billion dollars in fraud wouldn't be addressed. He also disagrees with the Republican proposal to turn Medicare into a voucher system. It, it just pretty much hangs our seniors out. It gives them basically a sheet of paper to go to an insurance company and beg for coverage. When in fact uh, we're always talking about increasing the size of pools. Medicare is a great pool. All the seniors are in it and they can go in and they can get the health care that they need when they need that health care. Senator Tester knows he's on track to lose, and so he's resorting to that Washington liberal playbook of trying to scare seniors uh, with false attacks. It's desperate, it's dishonest, and it's not going to work because Montanans are far too smart to fall for it and because they know that John Tester and Barack Obama cut $716 billion from Medicare. But Tester's campaign says the cuts enacted with the health care law come at the expense of private insurers, not beneficiaries. Reberg's campaign says these attacks are false. They say Reberg voted against the Ryan budget in 2011 and 2012 in favor of protecting Medicare. They say the congressman came out against President Bush's push to privatize Social Security. Reberg says he will not support any change that impacts anyone currently depending on Medicare or Social Security. The election's now just less than a week away, and in Helena, young adults learning the importance of getting involved in voting. Fox 5's Chutney Mata has the story. Students at East Valley Middle School voted and elected today. The 2012 mock election ballot includes actual federal and statewide candidate races, a handful of ballot issues, and polling questions related to the school schedule. The statewide program allows middle school and high school students a unique opportunity to voice their opinion on public issues. Students were signed and sworn into oath and ready to allow their fellow students to vote. Though the process was a little different than your typical paper voting, students got to vote on computers and iPads. Students proudly wore their I Voted sticker after they casted their ballots. Many students said that their experience was fun and that they were ready to turn 18 and vote. Go and like it'll be exciting to voice my opinion and what is going on in our country. Secretary of State Linda McCullough believes that the mock election is a fun and effective way to secure future voters. Well, we know that the earlier a student votes, or the earlier a young person votes, the more apt they are to always vote in elections. And so getting them started on the mock election is a really good thing to do. The program includes over 100 Montana schools and involves over 15,000 students. Innes Helena, Chadney Mata, Fox 5. And Helena's not the only city taking part in mock elections today. In fact, there are over 60 high schools doing so, including right here in Great Falls. Today's the day many high schools across the country hold mock elections. School administrators at Great Falls High are hoping today helps to educate students about the entire voting process, from registering to filling out the ballot. Teachers tell us they believe students are surprised at how complex the process can be. Every one of our kids, one of the most important things we want them to do is to be a functioning member of our 
uh, society and be a good citizen. And, and voting is their number one right, their ability to actually make change in the government. Many seniors are already old enough to vote. The past four years, Great Falls High has actually picked the correct winners, so they're hoping this mock election will offer some insight for the real election, which, remember, is less than a week away. The elections aren't the only thing coming up. We're now hours away from the bewitching hour of All Hallows' Eve or Halloween, of course. Tonight, Fox 5's Rachel Osley reports on how well local businesses are doing this season compared to previous years. Business is booming for party stores this Halloween. Well, they come out with new things, and people are always looking for what's new and what's, you know, the next big thing. For the first time, Spirit Halloween traveled to Great Falls for the bewitching holiday season, and they received a warm welcome. They came out in force in September for decorations and all the animatronics. It's always difficult starting a new seasonal store. You come into it not having any expectations. No, you just come into it hoping that the city will, will find you. But with the right location, Spirit plans on coming back to Great Falls next Halloween. <laughs> Party America has also seen the cash flowing in with everything you need for a monster mash. You get to have the party complete with all the decorations to go along with it. You can get costumes, decorations, and all your table setting needs. Everybody wants, you know, like the gory stuff to go along with their party. They want the hanging decorations. You can have a lot of fun decorating your house for Halloween. But it's not Halloween without a costume. For the young boys, we had a lot of Avengers, a lot of superheroes. For girls, it's princess. You know, they want the big poofy gown and the crowns and the shoes and tiara. If you don't have the accessories, then you can't have a complete costume. The best part of Halloween is that there are no rules. You can be who or whatever you want to be. You can just, like, you know, kind of branch out and do something different and be totally disguised from head to toe. It's kind of the selfish holiday. Most other holidays you're giving, um, so this is the one that you can actually buy for yourself. In Great Falls, Rachel Osley, Fox 5. Some not-so-fun Halloween news, a politically-themed Halloween display causing a stir in Indiana. A few weeks ago, this was the display out in front of a home in Boone County, a stuffed effigy tied up by the arms and neck wearing a mask of President Barack Obama. After much displeasure, the owner took down the display for a short time, only to bring it back in a more shocking way. The man says his display is not meant to be racist. He says his wife, who's actually African-American, also supports the display. The Indianapolis field office of the Secret Service say they're looking into the matter. Neighbors say this does not represent the people who live in that community. Over in Europe, an almost 400-pound pumpkin wins this year's biggest pumpkin competition. The competition taking place at Riga Zoo, where 26 pumpkins were put to the test. This year's winner beating out last year's record by 22 pounds. Locals in the area saying their pumpkins are so large they can't even move them. In Latvia, pumpkins are considered to be queens of the orchard because of their size and nutritional value. <laughs> honestly didn't know about pumpkin's nutritional value. I mean, I like my fair share of pumpkin seeds, yeah. but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, that, pumpkin pie, and uh, they're going to have to do some carving, yeah, because too heavy, I know. 400 you know, pounds? I got a pumpkin about this size, and you know, that was a good way just putting it out on the uh, <laughs> Are y'all so ready for Halloween? I think I'm ready. I'm excited to pass out some candy to kids this year. Uh -huh. Hopefully we've got the weather to do it. Yeah, it actually looks great for us. Uh, there's going to be some showers on the outskirts of town, maybe near the Canadian border. Those should move through tonight and be gone by trick-or-treat time. And there could be showers in the west, but we'll stay away from those as well. We'll let you know exactly what to expect next. Here's tonight's breakdown. Your weather authority forecast continues right now on Fox 5 at 9. Welcome back. Here's our Halloween photo contest entry tonight. On your way to winning gift certificates to Walmart from Spirit Halloween as well as Ace Hardware. So keep those coming in. We've got a whole lot of them, and you can check them out on Facebook. There's so many. I don't know if we're going to have time to show everyone all of those. Uh, pleasant air tonight. It's Gorgeous. Kalispell, you're seeing showers. The rest of us are just dealing with a few clouds at times tonight. The latest system off in eastern Montana. 54 in Lewistown. It's 56 in Great Falls. Already 37 in Cut Bank. And the winds here coming out of the north now at 24 miles per hour. So the front's moving through. There could be a little bit of freezing drizzle just near the northern tier of counties along the Canadian border. So the high line, Cut Bank to Haver, the showers will be gone tomorrow. So dry for trick-or-treat. 
and wet weather returns by the end of the week. So Thursday night into Friday, expect some more rain and mountain snow. 36 and half are overnight lows near 40 in Lewistown, 41 in Great Falls. It'll be a brilliant day with clouds and sunshine tomorrow. A treat rather than a trick. 58 in Great Falls, 64 in Helena, 60 in Lewistown. Halloween Wednesday, starting off with a wintry mix. Shelby 52, Cut Bank, right around the same 48 in Haver. So be careful driving early morning. Later on, it'll be mostly cloudy. And the numbers will be a little cooler, so you might want to put the jacket maybe under the costume. Got to got to look good tomorrow. 47 in Glasgow, 51 in Malta. But do consider these temperatures, they're going to be falling overnight. So if you're out a little later on towards sunset, maybe some long johns. 49 at noon, 58 for our high tomorrow. We're in the 60s again Thursday, so it's gorgeous. And then uh, 47 on Friday. So the tune starts to change, and it'll be a little cooler to start the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, we're rebounding and experiencing a little warming trend. But a uh, couple bouts with showers. Helena, not yet. 64 on Halloween. Rain returns Friday and again next week. Emily, back to you. Coming up... The Beebs hoping to go from the stage to the big screen. That's in tonight's entertainment update up next on Fox 5. We've got some upcoming performances for the Joe Bros. The Material Girl makes UK history and the Beebs trades music for movies in tonight's entertainment update. Justin Bieber branching into acting, though the details are still under wraps. The teen idol told a British magazine he's in talks to play a basketball player in an upcoming movie starring Mark Wahlberg. Star Wars heading to the magical world of Disney. The studio paying more than $4 billion for Lucasfilms, the production company behind the Star Wars films. The Walt Disney Company made the purchase Tuesday and will release Star Wars Episode 7 in 2015. Madonna has been named the best-selling female artist in British history. The 54-year-old singer took the top spot by selling more than 17.8 million singles in the UK since the release of her debut track, Holiday, back in 1984. And on the heels of their sold-out show in New York, the Jonas Brothers are going to play two shows at L.A.'s historic Panages Theater, November 27th and 28th. Tickets go on sale November 3rd. And that's your entertainment update. It's pretty rare to see a female playing football on a school football team, but at one Texas school, they have three female players, and two of them are on the same team. Texas takes its football pretty seriously, so some might be inclined to say the Highlanders are playing with a disadvantage having two females playing on their team. But that hasn't stopped the team from including Tori Dunn, number 13, playing wide receiver, and number 59, Mackenzie Horton, who plays left tackle. And that disadvantage has provided for an undefeated season for the Highlanders. So, Tom, what do you think? A new trend, mixing girls on the football team? I think it could work. Yeah, potentially. I guess we'll just have to see, you know, yeah. if it continues. Yeah, we'll see. Well, Tom Purvis joins me now for sports. And, Tom, last week it was soccer, and now it's volleyball playoffs beginning. Yeah, that's right, Emily. Uh, we've got a couple playing games taking place tonight. CMR and Helena highlights coming there. Plus, the University of Montana's quarterback situation has been in flux all year. A deeper look at the Montana quarterback situation next. Total sports coverage. Fox 5 Sports starts right now. Hi everyone, I'm Tom Purvis. Happy to have you with me tonight. The Montana Grizz women's basketball team will play the first of two exhibition games leading up to their regular season opener. Tonight against Carroll College, the Grizz open their regular season at Temple on Friday, November 9th. This one in Missoula. Grizz looking good early. Tory Hill on the backdoor pass right there to Alicia Smith who finishes Grizz with the early lead. Carroll wouldn't go down easy. Megan Patterson, the deep bomb. Yes, keep in mind, though, that was the first Carroll hoop of the game. Eight minutes in. Carroll keeping it outside. Sophomore Bailey Snelling. 
She's going to get the trifecta right here, cuts the gap to seven, but the Grizz just too experienced and a lot bigger for that matter. Tori Hill gets the mid-range jumper to fall here. This one's still in progress. Volleyball playing game, Hellgate at number three, ranked Helena. First rally of the game, Danny Norling. The set, Caitlin Oliver, bang! Jaden Nisbet's block attempt goes out, Bengals up one zip. Later on, Kirsty Ward on the serve, Melody McDaniel. Misjudged the ball, Ward with the ace, Bengals go up four zip. More Bengals, first set, Danny Norling, another set. And like last time, Oliver slams it down Hellgate's throat. Part of a six zip run for the Bengals. Now Norling with the serve, Knights unable to return, that's an ace. Bengals go on to win this one, 3-0. to zero. They advance to state. Hellgate is gone. CMR and Bozeman first set was all CMR, but Bozeman stormed back to make it 25-24 wrestlers. Hawks trying to tie things up as Morgan D'Augustino drops that one. A thing of beauty. We're tied at 25. Next point, Kellen Crandall doing the work of the net, blocks the shot, and Hawks are up one. Got to win by two. Senior Rachel Astrup kills that ball. And Bozeman takes the first set. The Hawks would never look back. 3-0 over CMR. Hawks are in. Rustlers sent packing. And the Grizz football season has been anything but a smooth ride. Yesterday's suspensions weren't the first, as the Jordan Johnson case prior to the season gave way to a quarterback battle in camp. Trent McKinney won the job, as we all know, but Shea Smithwick-Hahn has played lights out the past two weeks. Dominic Sheldon checked it out, has a deeper look. Take, it's not a bad time to take a shot. Quarterback is the most criticized position in football, and the Grizz have learned on the fly this season with two players who have never seen the field until this year. Well, for young guys, I'm real happy with them. I think they're both doing a nice job. The best part about those guys and, and Adam and Brady is they all work well together, so I'm real happy with the way they're progressing. Freshman Trent McKinney started the first eight games of the season, but sophomore Shea Smith, who can, appears to have taken over the starting role. Both quarterbacks say the competition has helped them grow as players. You know, the competition brings out the best of us. You know, when it's all relaxed and somebody has a position, it, it makes practice more, I guess it makes it more fun because we're we treat it more as a live situation rather than just going through the motions. Uh, yeah, we uh, say all for one, one for all mentality here. Um, you know, we're all competing for that starting job, but at the same time, who's ever out there, we're going to be right behind him, supporting him 100% and uh, being a great teammate. Players say it takes commitment and leadership to play quarterback. Be a quarterback. <laughs> you have to uh, definitely be able to take charge during hard times. You got to be able to respond to adversity. Oh, dedication! I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Is uh, you always have to be in the film room. You always got to be studying the game. Um, the game changes so much. Uh, defense can do so many different things. You got to understand how to attack each defense. These QBs may be young, but they aren't shying away from the limelight. I think my favorite part about quarterback is just the uh, the pressure that comes with it. Um, it's a great type of pressure. You know, everybody's counting on you to make make the big play or, you know, make the right decision at the right time. In Missoula, Dominic Sheldon, Fox 5 Sports. Hey, you can find me on Twitter at Tom T. P. Purvis. Go there to find an even greater depth of sports coverage, plus up-to-the-minute score updates. Hey, we're back one final time. All right, guys, so the big day is tomorrow. Adam, what kind of weather can we expect for kids to collect all the good candy? Well, the Halloween forecast really couldn't be a lot better, so put the final touches on your costumes. Here's your forecast. Looks gorgeous. 58 in Great Falls. This is Wednesday's high. Lows in the 40s, so 40s and 50s, trick or treat. 61 on Thursday. Showers return for us on Friday, and then the weekend looks dry again. Temperatures start to rebound later on next week. We could see rain returning around Tuesday and then probably a couple days after that. Wednesday in Helena, 64 for some spooktacular fun, 58 on Thursday. Uh, we will see these similar changes, cooler conditions heading into the weekend and uh, starting to build back, but then it looks like the clouds kind of hang tough and showers will return again. Check out that online. They are really lucky, trick-or-treaters. Have fun tomorrow. We'll see you after on Fox 5 News at 9.